I want to talk about something that's really important because it's an illness that affects 350 million people worldwide. I'm talking about depression. And while many do respond to antidepressants, about a third of patients don't get any benefit from drug treatments. There are obviously other modalities as well, but new research could be leading to some new solutions, finding that your mood might be directly affected by inflammation in the body. Joining us now is Dr. Jeffrey Meyer, a psychiatrist who has been looking into this. And uh, Dr. Meyer, thanks for being with us. Talk to us a little bit about what this new research may mean. Well, as you pointed out, Unfortunately, a high proportion of people who have clinical depression do not respond to conventional antidepressant treatments. And a good explanation for this is that there's probably multiple biologies that happen in the midst of a clinical depression. And inflammation is, a, is something that antidepressants were not designed to target. There was this new advance in brain imaging that came about a, few, a couple of years ago, a great leap over previous methods so that we can now look at inflammation in the brain and what we did is we looked in people who had clinical depression and found that on average they had a 30% rise in inflammation in their brain as compared to people in the midst of health. And I think this offers great opportunities for new treatment. Uh, absolutely. I love the study because one third don't respond to conventional me medication therapy. And, you know, we know that uh, what we can do to help fight inflammation, what we eat, eliminating pro-inflammatory foods and the benefit of exercise mm -hmm. in terms of diminishing that inflammatory effect. We talk about it with cancer as well. What you eat, if you exercise, the, those are two things. Well, and I'm, can... I'm curious if you think, you know, in this scenario, Dr. Meyer, I'll ask you this particular question. In some of the studies that have looked at people who have taken up some sort of physical activity and they find their depression symptoms can be improved. Do you think this all does get back to the inflammation theory? Well, I think the certainly the advantages of exercise is that you reduce the fat content in your body and fat in your body creates inflammation. So there's certainly advantages in that manner. Inflammation can have two roles. It can be hurtful in some ways, but sometimes inflammation can be reparative. So another advance that can come out of this work is that we can look at whether there are treatments that might instruct the brain to make the inflammation more helpful and curative. So perhaps in the future, someone might take a, an inflammation shifting or modulating treatment to convert this inflammation from being hurtful to being helpful to help cure the brain. Is there a direct correlation between the amount of inflammation and the severity of the depression? Yes, so certainly in our work, we find that people who have greater severity of their depression have uh, more inflammation. And I think an important issue is that in the study, on average, people with clinical depression had more inflammation, but it was really 20 to 40 percent of people who had a lot more inflammation as compared to people in the health. And, and so one of the things we need to do is to be able to identify the group of people who have this more prominently because those are the people who would best benefit from treatments to target inflammation. And so we are working on blood tests that would be lower cost and carefully measuring symptoms so that we can come up with a series of ways to predict who in the midst of their depressions has inflammation so we can guide the treatments and match them up best for those people. Well, Dr. Mai, we really appreciate you joining us today. Keep up the good work and yeah, I, 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 think I like this work in yeah. this study. I think it's I think it's very important. I mean, you know, we know what a big issue depression is and I mean you heard it from the expert that you know, a medication, a quick fix is only going to, to help in a third of cases. So you really, anybody out there suffering from depression has to think outside the box, right. these other things that they can do to deal with their condition. Right, because if we're giving them an antidepressant, which focuses on brain chemistry, but really they need some type of medication that focuses on inflammation, then they don't well, stand a chance in, in and, getting and, better. And, 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 and I, always get, I always get a little bit concerned when we overly focus on medication, medication, because I think it is important. Antidepressants play an important role, but we did, the field of psychiatry did move away from therapy to medication. And what I'm hoping now is that we, look, people do the best when there's a multimodal approach. And so when you talk about inflammation in the body, there are a lot of great ways to combat it in your day-to-day -day life combined with medications. All these options I think are wonderful. I always get a little bit dubious though than when we say, okay, well, you know, 
now we're going to find four more pills to put people on. And, and I, you know, and to me, I think it highlights how intricate the brain is and how it does respond to inflammation in the body. And, and, and sadly, the truth is we live a really pro-inflammatory life in, yeah. in current society, stress. you know, stress, the foods we eat, not enough exercise. And, and all those things can increase inflammation. And if you have a propensity for depression, you know, that inflammation may, maybe it pushes you over the edge. And I, mean, I, I think it's, it's an engineering it, research. It supports the whole, the whole theory that, you know, chronic illness is going to lead to depression. And, and that whole inflammatory theory would, would support that. Another reason why, you know, get your, all of your medical issues under control will help your mood as well. And you know what? It may be some time, and there may be some research into a medication that could help tamp down this inflammation. But in the meantime, if you are someone who is under the care of a psychiatrist or you are suffering from depression, this is worth talking to your doc about, about methods that you can use in your own life uh, to potentially tamp down on that inflammation.